This is Catherine Cespedes, and you are listening to Yogini from the Block, where we talk about taking spiritual practices and spiritual principles off of the yoga mat and into our real lives. You can listen to this bi-weekly podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play Music, and anywhere that you catch your podcasts. Hello and welcome to episode 17, Do You Believe in Magic? Subtitled, Manifesting Our Greatest Life. Now, if you are listening to this, make sure that you go ahead and subscribe. This way, every time a new podcast comes out from me, you'll be the first to know and you can never miss a beat. Uh, today, I am here with my wonderful producer, John Beaton. Hello. Happy generic time of the day. I almost forgot to mention that, didn't I? Almost, but you got it. And um, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and get started. So I was... um talking to my little brother, right? And I asked him a question. I don't remember what we were talking about. And I asked him, do you believe in magic? And he was like, no, I know pretty much all the tricks. And he's 10. <laughs> so I was like, hold up. You don't believe in magic? So this is what inspired this uh, podcast, this one question and, and his answer. Because I remember being 10... 11 years old thinking it's still possible. I just haven't learned it yet. And somewhere along the way, um, I refused to believe in magic. And then Harry Potter came out <laughs> and I started believing again. And so this is not the magic that I am talking about. And we'll go into detail about that. So I started doing a little research. And what I found was that about 85% of kids believe in Santa Claus. That was the only information that I could find. You actually find. did this research? I actually did this research. <laughs> awesome. And only 85% believe in Santa Claus. So what do the rest of the 15% do? Uh, they don't believe. They just accept oh. the presents, but they don't believe in Santa Claus. That's right? too bad, don't you think? Right. And then I went a little bit deeper because this is what happens when you start doing research on magic and Santa Claus. Um, around eight years old, they stop believing. They just stop believing in Santa Claus. And what this uh, struck in me was that not only do they stop believing in, in Santa Claus, it's, it's kind of like a generic magical thing that starts, um, like they start believing more reality. What they see mm. is what is real and only the reality is, is what it is. That's, this is our life. And I was like, wow, eight years old, that's, you're still a baby at eight. Mm. And so I, I did a little bit more, right? <laughs> and I discovered that... 85% of four-year-olds believe in Santa Claus. So I was like, okay, now this is getting like crazy. Four years old, they're still like, they haven't even started or they might have just started preschool. And 65% uh, of six-year-olds believe in Santa Claus. And then 25% of eight-year-olds. Eight so it really starts younger than eight years old but eight years old by then nine is like all right i don't believe it so it made sense when my little brother said at 10 you know i don't believe in magic and um this is all from the american journal of uh ortheo psychiatry from 1978 if you want to you know do your own research follow follow it up and make sure you're not lying about this <laughs> that i wrote down the right percentages yeah, yeah. um so okay, okay. you know the you know, it, this is from 1978. Mm -hmm. However, the numbers are just about the same. So if they're not um, at 85%, they're probably lower or just about the same today in 2018. Which, again, because I feel like in, in, in the 90s, magic was like starting to come back around. There was Sabrina the Teenage Witch. There was Harry Potter had just come out. Like 90, what, 97, 98. So... Magic was starting to come back in a different way. So then I started thinking about, okay, so what it, what is the, the definition between magic and, and miracles? Because people believe in miracles. Mm -hmm. It's magic that we're questioning. So the generic uh, magic definition is having or apparently, apparently having, Apparently, yeah. I thought that was funny because I was like, why is a dictionary being sarcastic? So it's having or apparently having supernatural powers. It's magic. 
And a miracle is a surprising and welcoming event that is not explicable by nat by natural or scientific laws, mm -hmm. and is therefore um, declared to be the work of a divine agency. Mm. Okay. And as I was looking at those two words, I saw that not only does magic have a connotation to it, almost as if it's an illusion, right? So we think magicians are master illusionists, right? Their art is to create illusions to make us believe that something is happening that is not happening. And thus there is an explanation as to what they're doing and how they're doing it. Where a miracle is accepted mostly wholeheartedly. And this really has to do with, you know, um, horrific events where something happens and someone is able to come out alive, right? We consider that a miracle. Or um, an illness that has come upon someone's life and they recover. That is a miracle. Um, birth, a child coming to life, That is a miracle. And when we use the word miracle, there is this beautiful, light, lofty um, feeling, this energy, this vibration that comes from it. And so when anyone talks to you about a miracle, you're like, you're like, yeah, miracles do exist. I can't explain them. Even if you don't believe in God, like there is a something because you can't explain why the moon rises, the sun, you know, like why don't the, why doesn't the moon and the sun get confused and they just show up whenever they want? <laughs> You know, there is, there is, um, it's a miracle because even though there's an explanation that the sun comes up in the morning and the moon comes up at night, there is still a miracle as to how they don't clash into each other or how this, this big, uh, floating globe, this big, um, floating sphere we're on doesn't spin into a black hole, you know? So there is a miracle as much scientific or mathematical, whatever you want to put to it to explain it, there is still that question as to how. And so a miracle kind of just covers it. So it's a miracle. So you're like, okay, it's a miracle. Let's stop trying to just um, go into it any deeper. It's a miracle. And as time and science evolves, we get to understand a little bit more. So to me, The way I believe, that doesn't mean that everybody has to believe this, it's just something that I'm sharing, is that faith and spirituality will always be five steps ahead of science. It'll always be there because there will always be a miracle that we can't just yet explain. In the future, there's a little bit more that we can understand, i.e. the equinox, you know, how the sun starts coming up earlier or later. Right. We didn't understand that maybe three, four hundred years ago and thus it was a miracle. But now we see that, oh, there's a tilt in the axis and this is what happens. And and so it, there's a scientific explanation towards it later on. So, like I said, this is the reason why to me, uh, spirituality and faith will always be light years ahead of our science. And it's so beautiful that our science is always <laughs> is always seeking to find an explanation for those things. Now, coming back to magic, um, I love how uh, J.K. Rowlands and um, other, other authors have really brought this magical sense back into our realities. And um, what I realized is in, in what I've been learning, like with Abraham Hicks and the art of manifesting, um, And the science of mind, change your thoughts, change your life. This is all magic. This is our magical practice because it is having or apparently having supernatural powers. Apparently. Because there is something in me that is allowing that to happen. I don't own these supernatural powers. Like I can't, I can't copyright them, right? Like I can't put it in a box. But I know that For me, miracles and magic are kind of interchangeable, right? So it was a miracle that, that, um, it was a miracle that I woke up this morning, but it was magical how I got on, in my car and made it here with time to spare because the act of me waking up, it, it's really at faith's hands, whether or not I make it another day, 
whether or not I have everything is functioning exactly how it needs to function in order for me to open my eyes, take a shower, brush my teeth, brush my hair. You know, all these things have to be working so perfectly and so precisely. So I have a question. Where, yes. where if anywhere, and at what point does gratitude come into the picture for you for the differences like waking up is what a miracle he said it's a miracle uh -huh. and, and it's magical that, yeah and you got here by magic mm -hmm. okay so yes. where's gratitude fit into this for you gratitude is all of this for me so miracle magic um gratitude is is the number one thing because it just waking up in the morning i'm like oh thank god i made it another yeah. day <laughs> i always get up and go oh my god another day this side of the sod Mm -hmm. Yes, it's it's it follows along with it. I think the reason the reason why I believe in magic mm -hmm. is because my gratitude is so grand that whenever I see a miracle, I'm like, hell yeah, that's a miracle. And I am so happy that it happened, whether it's to me or to someone else. I'm so happy that it happened. And and also to kind of allow that to um help me throughout my days. So not forcing, right? So not forcing it to, to a state where I want, I want a big house and I'm going to force it because I'm going to work this many hours. I'm going to get this many clients and I'm going to force it. For me, that's where the magic kind of gets brittle and, and dull and lost in the forcing and the maintaining and the, the, um, the amount of energy that goes into that. Yeah. That's really well said, by the way. Thank you. So the magic is when I want this house and I want this house for X, Y, and Z. And I'm so grateful for this little apartment that I have, this little studio that I have, this, this place where I am so loved and welcomed and I enjoy every single second that I'm living here. And it, this is magical for me. The fact that <laughs> I didn't know where I was going to land and I'm still going and I'm, and I'm getting better. And I'm, I'm getting not smarter. Well, I am getting smarter because I'm reading a lot, but that's not, that's not really what, what I'm feeling. I'm feeling more intuitive. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling more intuitive. Like I am allowing for, for spirit to come through mm -hmm. where sometimes I say something or sometimes I, I go in a, in a direction and I often get asked like, how did you know? How did you know? And I didn't. I had no idea. I had no idea. But I trusted. So with gratitude comes this trust that I am so grateful for all this happening. And thus, I trust that the universe only has the best in mind for me. I trust that the universe always has everything in alignment for me. Always orchestrating these grand, um, serendipitous um, encounters for me that my thoughts and my um in like the hits of intuition come exactly when i need them right so it's not like hit of intuition what do i do with this right it never happens it's that not way. random for you um i i, I suspect you create random. them in other words you hmm. create you create an intention and they show up um do i create an intention Yes, I do. I, I um, enjoy living intentionally because I feel like that's when I'm awake. Mm. You know, otherwise, if I'm not living intentionally for me personally, this doesn't mean that anyone has to adopt this. But I feel like when I'm not living intentionally, I fall asleep and I, I allow the conditions of the world to run my, my life and my world. However, when I'm intentional, I'm saying, that's nice. I'm not going to do that, though. Thank you very much. I'm going to go this way. And I'm going to do this. And so magically, the road begins to open up little by little. It's almost like, I, honestly, when I first started, I felt like I was walking down this dark path. This dark, scary, hollow, whatever other scary words you want to put in there. Path where there was no light. There was no real guidance. And I said, I'm going to follow that anyway, because it feels like that's where I want to go. 
That one over there that's all lit up, I can see. I can see exactly how much time is going to take, how much work, how much effort, how much I don't want to do it. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go down this path and we'll see what happens. And little by little, there's like, there's like, um, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know if we have this here, but in New York City, sometimes when you're walking down like, um, like an, un, like a, what are those called? Like a scaffolding? Yeah. When you're walking through a scaffolding, there are lights that turn on as you're passing them. They're like motion detectors. <laughs> so I feel like what has been happening is that I've been walking down these these motion detector lights. And so the lights are coming on and I can see, I can see where I'm stepping and I can see that it's safe and I can see what is hap- what's going to happen just before me. And I get to decide whether or not I'm going to continue going. And thus far, I've said yes. I'm going to continue going this far. The only difference between the New York City scaffolding and this this particular path is that when I look back, those lights are still on. Mm. And I get to enjoy what I have, what I have done, what I have walked through, what I have chosen, what I have said yes to, and also what I have said no to. Because what is so wonderful about the path of magic, the path of um, faith, the path of walking with with spirit hand in hand this intimate this intimate walk is that for every time that i listen to my intuition i learn something and i grow and i expand and for every time that i don't listen i learn something i grow and i expand either way it's not like spirit has never said to me you didn't listen so i'm never going to give you directions again you good, go figure it out by yourself. Like spirit has never, (laughs) spirit has never been pissed. Spirit has never been like, you know, I'm just going to go help someone else because you are clearly not listening to me. Every time I listen and for every time that I don't, I have expanded in such a way that the next hit of intuition, I can, I can either choose to listen to or I could choose not to. It's very subtle too, isn't it? Sometimes. Well, maybe not for you. No, sometimes it is. Sometimes it's like, sometimes it's like, look at your phone and then boom, I get an email where I'm like, I have been thinking about you. I'm so happy. So happy that you send me an email and I'm going to send you one back and and we're going to keep this relationship going. Other times it's so loud. It is just so loud. Like mostly in the middle of the night. It's really loud. Mm. And I think it's it's just because I've gotten to a point where I'm not worried about anything. Like I can't do anything <laughs> right now. I can't worry about anything mm. because nothing can be done at this hour. And so spirit is at its loudest. Where spirit is like, you don't have any music playing. You don't have any movies playing. You don't have any... Um, Instagram videos going, I'm going to be the loudest that I can be. So it, it always depends on the hour of the day for me and um, where I am in my life. Because when I was on vacation, I felt like there was only spirit. There was only spirit because she was so loud and insistent. And it wasn't in a naggy way. It was just like, you know, if you don't listen, you know, it's going to happen. But, you know whatever you want <laughs> and you'll get munched by a tiger if right what, careful whatever you want and and i just listened i just kept listening so i mean there are so many examples in colombia alone and so when i came back what i realized was why isn't she why don't i allow her to talk to me more often like what hold up What is the difference between me being on vacation and me being at home living my day-to-day life? Why is it that we crave and desire vacation? Why? And it's because we really tune out our own intuition. For me, this is my reality. I tune her out so much that by the time I go on vacation, she is singing and dancing and just her, like, she is, she is just like, I'm here and I've always been here and I'm so happy that you're listening to me now and, and there's no distractions for you not to listen to me because you have no Wi-Fi. So what you're going to do? You got to listen to me. <laughs> like you're not going to lose anything by not listening to me. And that's really how I felt there. I'm not going to lose anything by listening to you. So when I came back, I was like, I'm pretty sure that concept still applies. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> when I'm not on vacation. 
And again, this concept of, of, of magic, this magical feeling, you know, because when I came back, uh, I remember a lot of people were asking me how my vacation went. It looked so magical. And it was. And it was. And what I would love to curate and continue intentionally creating for myself and for my family is that magical experience. It's that magical space where there it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. We'll get it done. It's not a big deal. You know, and, and this also has a lot to do with me getting to know myself, learning learning myself so that I can create those um, boundaries because it's a little hard to create magic when you don't know the alchemy, right? So what happens when you're, when you're anxious and trying to create, you know, what is the alchemy of that for you? For me, it's just that I create more anxiety. (laughs) That's what comes out. That's the alchemy of, of my magic at that point you know, and I've become a real, um, alchemist of my life. And, and that's what I'm talking about when I say manifesting our greatest life, which doesn't mean that we're not going to have any, any situations or conditions that would hurt or bother us in creating our greatest life, it would mean that when those situations arise, we're able to take a step back in order to make the best decision for ourselves and those involved at that moment. That's what that means. It doesn't mean that by creating my greatest life, I have no worries or anxiety and it's just always to the side. And, and we've we've had this uh, conversation on the podcast before. Um, you can check out Los Tres Amigos. I think that was episode 15 mm. um, where I talked about this, really befriending those feelings because really what happens is that those feelings arise when there's something that we really need to look at. You really just need to take a look at that. And again, in being an alchemist in our lives, what that means is that now that worry is here, I can either make a choice of stuffing it down or or make the magic in in putting it, you know, in the cauldron, putting it in the cauldron and see what what's what's there. What is really there? Let's uncover that. And in reading Care of the Soul uh, by Thomas More. This is, what, this is what he talks about. He talks about taking care of the soul. That because that the, where the soul lives and resides, that's where the magic comes from. That's where miracles come from, right? And that's what I've been discovering is that the more I care for my soul, the more I listen to her. For me, she's a, she's a woman. Surprise, surprise. Um, the more magic I can create with her, co-creating right? This meditation where I can go in there and literally ask for nothing. It's, you know, it's taken a while for me to get there, but literally go in there asking for nothing other than let me get to know you, you know, and uh, Joe Goldsmith is great at talking more about that in his, in his book, uh, Practicing the Presence and creating an intimate relationship with spirit, whatever the spirit universe, um, divine intelligence, whatever we want to call it, there's only one truth. There is only one truth. And really creating that intimate relationship where I come to you just to get to know you. Like, who are you? And in that, I'm, I'm getting to know myself. I'm getting to know myself and, and what I like and what I, I do not prefer. And what works for me and what happens in my, you know, in my laboratory of life. Like how can I create something so beautiful and so grand and so fun? That's what I want to do. I want to create fun. I want to create experiences that um, fill my heart with laughter and joy, you know? So again, when I asked my little brother, do you believe in magic? And he said, no, I was like, oh, okay, that hurt. But that doesn't mean that I have to go ahead and start pouring these beliefs of mine into him that just means that i get to i get to from here see what that what that looks like for you and if you come to me asking me for something then i'm i'm openly available yeah you know what would come to my mind is you could simply ask you know simply say something like well i guess you'll get to discover magic in another way 
yeah. just kind of plant the seed that there is magic mm-hmm. in other ways. Just because Santa Claus is gone doesn't mean there's no magic. Poor Santa Claus. And, you know, it really had me thinking about my beliefs, and that's what I've been doing a lot now that I'm in Prague. Yeah, so I was going to ask you, how's that going? Wonderful. Good. Wonderful. This week was actually quite uh, tough for me. Uh, the week before was easy breezy. Yeah. Yeah, full of magic, full of laughter, full of love. This week I was like, what the Humphreys? What is this? I don't want to do this anymore. And then I realized this is the work. This is the work. This is my work in discovering further, deeper who I am, mm-hmm. you know? And there is all, there's always, you'll hear like dark magic, right? And what I believe that is, is the magic that happens when we're not intentional, That's what it is, is when we're living this life and people are telling us that, well, if you don't go to school, you won't get a job and you don't go to school. And thus, it's really difficult to get a job that'll pay you what you need in order to survive. The dark magic of of the world, it's really what that is. And, you know, the media has done such a wonderful job at at like planting these seeds of fear and anxiety in their Mm -hmm. movies. And I realize, like, if you like those, that's kudos for you. I used to bond with my sister over scary movies, scary dark movies. You sit on the movies. sit on the couch and hold each other and watch them. N- no, I hold her. She watches, and I have my eyes closed. And I was like, "This is," <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "This is torture." This like I'm torturing myself to bond with her, and I was just like, "I I just can't do it." Like my heart really can't take this. Um, can we like go trick or treating? Like whatever you want. I just can't do this anymore. My heart really hurts. So it, it's really it's really about what we are feeding ourselves through the media, through Instagram, Facebook, and you know this is what I do for a living. Mm-hmm. So I have to spend time kind of um, filtering, filtering. Like that's not mine. Like so and so went on this trip and that trip and they bought these shoes and that phone. Filtering. Like, is that something that my spirit needs? Because technically our spirit needs nothing. Yeah. Nothing other than our love. Yeah. Nothing. Because spirit is constantly pouring this love onto us. And we get to either accept it and create magic with spirit, Mm -hmm. co-creating this life that, that thrills spirit and thrills us, or we don't accept it and and we are still creating magic, but this is that dark magic because mm. it's it's some it's the magic that we don't want in our lives. Mm. Right? Like I remember there was a time where um in college I was working and I was going to school and I was like also doing other things for like my sorority. And I remember thinking, life sucks. Like <laughs> this is hard. Like I have to pay my bills and I have to do X, Y, and Z. And what was happening was that I was creating more dark magic in my life because I was like, I can't afford, I can't afford, I can't do, I can't afford. And so what happened was that I kept getting bills that I couldn't afford. I was like, wow, this sucks. Like life is horrible. Life is horrible. And so what I learned in the contrasting of both lives between what I lived in college and and what I am living now is that there is this magical mirror. And it's always facing you. Mm. And that mirror is life. And if you smile at life, life will smile at you and love you and care for you. And if you keep throwing rocks at life, it's going to, you know, just do the same thing. Throw them back. Right. So you, so what happens is that you start cracking that mirror. You start cracking it. So what you start seeing is distorted. Mm -hmm. You start seeing phantoms and ghouls and goblins that are coming out of nowhere. Why? Because you're cracking a mirror and you can't see in it anymore. This fog is coming in out of nowhere. And once you, once you get a a brand new mirror, a brand new perspective and the cracks are gone, you realize that there are no ghouls and monsters and goblins. Like they're not there. They're not there, but we create them. With, with the words that we say to ourselves. So self-talk is really like where the magic begins, right? So honestly, it, it starts from a thought and then it manifests itself once we speak it into existence. So, <laughs> you know, Abraham Hicks says that um, 
when she first started and she said this, people were trying to suck back their words. Like, like if they said it, they were like, like, take it back. I don't want that. And what's so beautiful is the time, mm. like the time lapse between a thought, sometimes between a thought, the words and its manifestation. Right. So we have like, thank God. Right. Thank spirit that we have some time between what we think and what we say and what we do. And then the um, the magical response to that, whether it be light or dark. And these are just terms. This doesn't mean that light is good and and dark is bad. It's just terms. It's just so that we can see this duality. Um, sometimes we need the dark in order to really appreciate and be grateful for the light and vice versa. Or see the light in order to be really grateful and... Um, and appreciative of the dark because if I didn't go through those times I don't know what I would be doing today I'm not sure I have no idea but I needed those times and so I don't regret any of it so I just wanted to you know point that out that it's not good it's not bad it just it's just you know yeah more and more we talk you know I get the sense that there's less and less good and bad yeah yeah um who is it Emma Curtis Hopkins would say that um, there is no evil. There is a lack of good. Mm-hmm. And this is a belief. We can take this or we we don't. Mm-hmm. So, because I realize that in accepting that belief for myself, what I notice is that I'm more tolerant of people. It doesn't mean that I agree with them or accept what they're saying. It does not mean that. It means that I am available to hear what they have to say. And all of a sudden, I see their divine greatness within them. And what happens is that if their beliefs don't match mine, and I accept them anyway, somehow they either shift and change mm. or they they disappear. I'm not doing anything. They just, they just go somewhere. They're like, um, I, I got to go for this amount of time and they just don't come back. Like, I don't know what it is. It's magic. I do know what it is. It's magical. It's, it's, it's a miracle. It's, it's kind of like, you know, those people, either they're going to, they're going to learn their stuff whatever they need to learn in their spiritual journey, or they've already taught me what I needed to learn. Mm -hmm. Right. So you're right. I mean, for me, what I see is that there is no evil per se, but there is just that lack there of good, just like there is no darkness per se. There is the lack of light. That's the way I believe. And, and, you know, if you're listening, you may take this or not, whatever really resonates with you. I suggest that you do your own research. I suggest that you do your own reading. I suggest that you find what is good for you. 